Hello. I heard you wanted to be a live streamer. <clears throat> there are loads of different streamers out there. You have your just chatters, Namaste. your artists, your animators, your musicians, and of course your gamers. But there are even different types of gamers. I see. I mean, you have your seriously skilled gamers, and you have your more relaxed gamers. Now I'm stuck. There we go. And then you even have your community focused gamers. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast, gotta go fast. Uh, uh. What kind of live streamer do you want to be? This video will give you some tips on how to set up for a live stream, the equipment that you might need, and also some tips on how to start. So who am I and what kind of live streamer am I? Well, I'm a bit offended that you can't tell right now because obviously I'm a skilled gamer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, Come and go. I don't know which button, because I pressed X. Oh my God, I'm actually getting wrecked. What the hell? <sighs> no, I... I guess I would say I'm more community focused. What's up gamers? This is the equipment that I used to make my high quality live streams for you all. It might surprise you to hear that you don't necessarily need a high end PC to start streaming. I use a Dell Inspiron gaming laptop and I also don't have a webcam yet. So instead I use my Samsung Note 9 and the Android app Droidcam. Okay, so my setup it probably isn't the best that you've ever seen, but it is getting better and that's the main thing. And I just want to take this moment to say thank you to Blue Microphones for partnering with me as a part of their Take the Leap and Power by Blue campaign. I've personally been using Blue Microphones for years and have always found them to be really great quality. And they've sent over a Logitech Pro X wireless headset, which is so comfortable and means that I can stream for longer without being in pain and hearing my game audio nice and clearly. And here's a word from Blue Microphones. There's no doubt it starts with a spark of inspiration to come up with something new and share it with the world, to tell your unique story and connect with others to make a positive impact and bring people closer together. Whether you're recording a podcast, filming a YouTube video, or simply live streaming, Blue Microphones will help your message cut through the noise. Sleek, stylish, and easy to use. Blue Microphones makes it easy to capture crystal clear broadcast sound, even if you're just getting started. Let Blue connect your inspiration to your audience, because they know how important it is to have good audio. That's my setup, but back to you. So ask yourself, why do you want to stream? Imagine your amazing setup that will be so much better than mine. Your high-end equipment, your amazing gaming PC, all these LED lights everywhere. And now chuck that out the window, just chuck it out the window. To be a live streamer, you must learn humility. A lot of the time, especially when you start off live streaming, you're gonna get so many things wrong and it's going to go wrong live when you're being watched by people and that can be pretty embarrassing. I honestly believe there's no point waiting until you have your perfect setup with all your great equipment. This setup that I have right now, it's still not complete, no, but it's so much better than where it was when I started live streaming because I actually started live streaming on my PlayStation 4. You don't even need a PC to be a live streamer. I did it through my PlayStation 4 with the PlayStation camera and that was that. You could hook up a microphone to it if you wanted to be a little bit more crisp. At the end of the day, what you need to get better at initially anyway is um, communicating with people online, with your chat, and feeling comfortable in front of the camera. Ready? If you're not a YouTuber or anything like that, it is a weird thing to get used to, talking to a camera, especially when there's no one there. If you see that zero in the view count, it can be pretty disheartening and then you feel like you don't want to perform or entertain, but you must just get used to doing it no matter what that view count is because when people jump in, you have a few seconds to grab their attention. So you don't need a great setup. 
to start practicing that right now. But saying that, it is really to know where you're aiming for in the future. So don't forget that wonderful view of your amazing setup and all of the people watching your stream and how great it's gonna be once you get there. Okay, the next question I'm gonna ask you is what do you want to stream? This kind of ties back nicely to the question that I asked you previously of why do you want to stream? And if you initially thought that you want uh, money and fame and to be well known, then good on you, but this will impact on what you stream because you will have to find your niche and you'll have to look at live streaming in more of a business sense. You'll have to carve out a path for yourself and build up a dedicated audience that are expecting the same thing over and over. So they'll always be wanting to come back because they'll know what to expect from you. Of course, you can also build up a great audience with your personality. I'm not saying that you can't, it's just a lot harder. So if you build up a presence around a game that you're playing a lot, say Overwatch, I mean Fortnite is the obvious one, or a new game that has come out and not as many live streamers are playing, that's how you will grow an audience fast. With that in mind though, I would like to just say that once you have that audience who knows you for something that you've done, whether that be a certain game or even a certain category, it's hard to break out of that. It's hard to go and do something else because your audience expect that thing from you. And there have been certain instances of well-known live streamers trying to branch out to something else because they've gotten bored of what they're doing and ultimately getting very negative reactions from their audiences. So just think about that. Are you doing it for purely enjoyment or are you doing it in a business sense to try and grow a platform and make a name for yourself? There is a possibility you can do both. But ultimately, no matter what you choose, please play something that you enjoy. It's very obvious. You can play something very popular and of course that will probably help boost your view count. But if it's popular and someone else is playing it and they obviously enjoy it more than you, people aren't gonna stick around. So play something that you love, that you enjoy, that you genuinely have fun with and your viewers will have fun watching you. And the great thing about being a new streamer and having hardly anyone watching is that you get to experiment, experiment with different games with even different categories and see what feels right for you and then once you find your niche or your flow or you decide heck i'm just going to do something different each time because that's what makes me happiest then you can start going and make a schedule for that and schedules are very important i will just put it out there try and stream as often as you can i stream once a week and that's not enough <laughs> now once you've decided what kind of streams you want to do, you'll know where you want to invest in your equipment and your software. For example, if you decide that you're a musician and you want to sing, or if you just want to do chill chatting with your community on live streams, you will definitely want to invest in a better camera and better audio equipment because essentially that's all that people are going to see. Your lovely face and that booming voice. <laughs> Gamers on the other hand, depending on what types of games you want to play, you might want to buy a capture card so you can capture your Switch or your PlayStation. And of course, better PC equipment. It's always good. Make it run smoother. All streamers, however, will need some sort of broadcasting software. So you can capture the video inputs and the audio inputs and output it to the live stream platform of your choice. The most popular one is OBS and I personally use Streamlabs OBS. It's an extension of OBS, but it comes with alerts and overlays and themes, which make it really easy to set up a really nice looking stream. You can also use Streamlabs to set up timed comments to give your viewers a random compliment every 20 minutes. I personally have one that says, hey you, you're cute, and I think that's great. <laughs> Once you've set up uh, your broadcasting software with the, oh, what's it called? <laughs> Once you've set up all of your video inputs and audio inputs into your broadcasting software, it's really easy then to just use a stream key to set up and stream it to your platform of choice. But what is your platform of choice? 
Where do you stream? Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, Facebook Live. There are so many options and I know it can get very overwhelming. I felt it too when I first started live streaming. All I can say to this is do a bit of research. Oh, well, that's not all I can say. So why have I written that in the script? I can say way more than that, messy. Do a bit of research for yourself because they all have unique benefits. Twitch, for example, has uh, a lot of integration in with games so that the community can get involved while you play certain games and also trigger off overlays and alerts and things like that way more than another platform such as YouTube can do. However, YouTube is primarily used for video content, not so much live streaming content. So there's way higher chance of people still viewing your live streams even after it's ended. So your view count will still be going up. It's completely up to you, but I would personally say to choose a platform where you feel most drawn to as a viewer because you're more likely to feel more comfortable there. And also you would understand the platform and the audiences a lot better because you're already a part of it. But saying all that, if you're really indecisive like me, you can actually use Restream. Using Restream, you can stream to multiple different platforms at the same time. I use this to stream to both YouTube and Twitch because my audience are primarily on YouTube, but I know some people like to watch me on Twitch as well. Hey, I guess I'm just a people please. <laughs> but do bear in mind that if you do this, then you will not be eligible to become a Twitch affiliate or a Twitch partner and start making money through that way because they ask for live content exclusivity. At the end of the day, live streaming is about forming connections with people all around the world and sharing with them things that you're passionate about. <laughs> oh, that's a bit creepy. Actually. I believe if you stay true to who you are and what you're passionate about, then you're bound to have a really positive experience through live streaming. I obviously have to make a little disclaimer saying, you know, it's live, be careful what you say, have some fun, but keep in mind that you're, you're being watched by multiple eyes, which actually is a little bit scary. Um, <laughs> but ultimately, it brings you together with people that you would have never met otherwise or even heard of. And I think that's the really nice thing about live streaming. But then again, I am just, you know, a big mushy sop of uh, mush sop. So <laughs> I know I kind of breezed through a lot of that, especially with the um, equipment and software side, because I just wanted to try and condense everything down into questions that you could ask yourself to then go away and do more research. But if you do want me to go through something in more detail, please leave me a comment down below. I wanna help as many of you guys as I can. I'm not a massive streamer, no, but I have been doing it for quite a while and I enjoy it, so maybe I can help you guys. Cool, have a lovely day or evening, bye.